guys, this is my review of the Subsonic Pocket Pro wireless controller for the PS3. So that's roughly the size difference. I've heard rumours that you can use these controllers with Windows as well, as the Subsonic Pro controllers generally do. So good points about the Pocket Pro is that, for me personally, I have incredibly small hands. Look at the tiny. So for me, it's much easier to use in the sense that it feels like a much more natural fit. Um, obviously, the other good thing is how pretty it is. Um, the reason I picked it was because it was green. Green's my favourite colour. It's what caught my eye in the first place. And that is what made me buy that particular controller. I am aware um, the Pocket Pro is also sold in blue and pink and yellow I think. Um, recently I've tried to go back on Amazon which is where I bought it in the first place so just to have a look and I haven't been able to find any other colours. I haven't been able to find the Pocket Pro at all actually. Subsonic are still selling a loads of other Pro controllers but I personally have yet to refind the Pocket Pro. The thing that I found, found was a bit of a downfall was if you forget this, you can't use it. <laughs> um, however, when you do connect it up, the connectivity is very good. It's going a bit mental. So you push it once, hold on, and it should do that. And then you push it twice, and it will do that. And then a third time, but my PlayStation isn't on, and then it will assign itself. So it's very simple to reassign your controllers to, so it never becomes an issue. It's just if you do forget that, then... Or you lose that altogether. I mean, what if what if you did lose that altogether? I, I don't even know how you'd go about connecting it at all, to be completely honest. I'm sure there's probably another way, but I haven't figured it out. Um, another downfall is it feels... Like, it's incredibly oversensitive to every little touch. So, as an example, you might be playing a particular war game, which will go unnamed for now, and you might just be aiming with L1, shooting with R1, and randomly your character will toss a grenade. It's... <sighs> it's incredibly frustrating because you are convinced that you did not push that button. I blew myself up quite a lot doing that. The other issue with oversensitivity is that um, now and again, out of the blue, you won't be pushing any buttons anywhere near it. Um, it will act as if you've pushed a PS home. That one. <laughs> so that is like the main big issue with this particular controller. Other than that, I can't fault it. It's incredibly, it's incredibly light. It's pretty. It's not overly expensive. I think I spent either 25 or 30 pounds buying this and it had free shipping. So that was awesome. Okay, I've had other controllers for the PlayStation 2 and PS1. But this is my first wireless controller for the PlayStation 3. It works. There's nothing wrong with it in the major sense. There's nothing you can't get over. If you were using this for um, to put it in your bag, take it around a friend's place to game on, that's great. It would, it would serve you well. However, if you were going to use this controller, maybe to try and replace your normal controller, I would advise against it. It's not going to work in that sense. You will get frustrated. You'll end up throwing it across the room. I'd probably give this a 3 out of 5 as an overall rating. Nothing majorly wrong with it. It looks pretty. It does what it says on the tin. It's just those issues, those technical issues during the game get so frustrating. It's unreal. You will end up shouting at it a lot. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you for watching my review. And I'll review something else really soon too.